Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. As usual, I'm working out here late at night on a Sunday night. It's snowing outside. It's nice and warm here in the shop. Uh, I've got another CNC project lined up. I've got a sheet of quarter inch steel laying here in the CNC table. And this is actually gonna be the last time that I use this CNC table. I sold it to a friend. He's coming to pick it up next weekend. And so this, is, this evening's gonna be the last time the CNC table runs. I have a new table right here. I've pulled it out of its crates and everything, but I have not yet started assembling it. That's gonna happen over the next few weeks and I'll be sure to set up the cameras and uh, take you guys along as I build the new table. So tonight I'm gonna be building a hanging steel uh, target shooting system that I can easily disassemble, put in the bed of my truck and take to the rock pit where I usually do my target shooting. Now I'd ever, actually never uh, shot steel targets before. Uh, but I had the opportunity to do that a couple of months ago, and I really enjoyed it. I like the gong sound, that, uh, that instant feedback that you get when you hit what you're aiming at. And so thought I'd build my own. Now, I don't have any AR-500 steel here. Uh, the AR-500, I believe it stands for abrasion resistance, a really hard steel. It's what you really need to make your targets out of. Uh, shooting regular mild steel can be a little bit dangerous, especially if you're a little bit closer. Uh, you can get some ricochets that actually come right back at you. So. Um, I'm not CNC cutting the, the actual targets themselves. I ordered those from a place called AR500Armor.com. I'll put a link in the video description if you guys want to buy the same ones that I did. They weren't really all that much money. So I got an assortment of steel targets for under 100 bucks, um, all different sizes uh, that are all half inch AR500 steel. So now that I have those things in hand, I spent a few minutes tonight in Fusion 360 and I drew up some leg brackets and also some hangers I picked up some uh, conduit, some metal conduit from Home Depot. Uh, I'll put links to that stuff in the video description as well. And uh, now we're out here in the shop. I'm ready to fire up the CNC table and start cutting out those hangers. So uh, let's get to it. All right, I've got our programs loaded up here. Uh, this is four of the hangers that are kind of nested together a little bit. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna cut out eight of these because I have four hanging steel targets. So we'll do two of these uh, back to back. I got the table positioned there. Fire up the plasma cutter. Get my ground on. Everything looks good. Let's hit the start button. Well, see, this is why it's difficult for me to schedule my YouTube uploads. Uh, last night while the plasma table was running, uh, my fire pager went off, I got called out to a car accident, so I ended up out there all night instead of getting things done here in the shop. So, uh, it's following night. I got a pile of these hangers cut out right here. I cleaned these three up with the grinder. I still gotta clean these ones up. And let me show you how these things work. I've got my hanging targets right here, and basically these, uh, these hooks just go right in here, one on either side just like this. And then these round portions, uh, the metallic uh, conduit that I bought slides through these. Just like that, we got ourselves a hanging target. So I'll be able to hang, I think I made eight of those hangers, so I'll be able to hang four targets on each section. And we'll go ahead and cut this thing down to about five feet and then move on to the the removable legs. Well, I had the bandsaw out, I went ahead and cut down these legs right here. So this is one inch metallic conduit, and this is inch and a quarter metallic conduit. So the plan is to use these four for the legs and this for the crossbeam. Um, I've seen systems that use the one inch tubing for the crossbeam as well, but it always sags in the middle. Thought I might try and upgrade mine a bit. These, um, since the pieces come in 10 foot lengths, I just cut them in half. So all these legs are five feet. Uh, maybe a little bit too long, I don't know. When I set it up, I can always make them shorter if I need to. Now let's uh, go ahead and load up 
the leg bracket in here and we'll get to cutting that. Well, there's the leg bracket. The top piece goes through that hole there and then the two tabs right here slide into the leg pieces. You know, and I didn't really engineer this or anything. I just kind of eyeballed it. So the idea is to get a kind of a steep angle on the legs to try and keep them out of the area of any errant rounds. And then we'll see how we, uh, how we ended up. than I had anticipated. I don't know, that's really not too bad. I think I might make an adjustment. Well, these ones I'll probably keep for myself, but I may make an adjustment on the next one and take like an eighth of an inch out of the diameter of that upper hole to steepen that up a bit. That ought to give me plenty of clearance above the ground. All right, let's cut out the second one and put this whole thing together. the legs go down that way. Um, I may make a change to that, but at least for now we can put this thing together. See what we get. Yeah, it bites in nicely. Seems sturdy enough. Yeah, the weakest part of this is the angle on those legs. I'm gonna have to add, I'm gonna have to correct that for sure. But let's hang some gongs here and take a look at the way it's supposed to do it together. this in the brake and just put a little brake right here to fold that top over. I think that will actually help quite a bit with that angle. Let's try that. Lessen the angle up of those legs a little bit. Seems strong enough. Yeah. 
Well, that's it. That little bin really took care of things. I, I like how this is biting in now. I, I, I think I'm going to go back into Fusion and, and shrink this hole just a little bit. Um, just so I don't have to do these bends if I make any more of these. But I do like the height of the legs. Gives me some flexibility in mounting. These gongs are held nicely above the ground. Um, the center bar is not sagging at all. The, any of the play that's there is really in the angle in the legs. Yeah, and all this breaks down into a nice, convenient, uh, small package. It ought to be easy to fit, you know, even in the extended cab of my truck. Well, I'm going to clean up some more of those J-hooks so I can hang some more of the gongs. And then the next nice weather day that we have out here, which is not in the 10-day forecast, but uh, sometime here the, the weather will clear up a little bit. We'll take this thing out to the rock pit, and uh, we'll hit these things with a few different calibers. It's bunching them all together. I'm going to go for the far left gong now. Well, that just about wraps up this project. I've got this 10-inch uh, gong right here. And I've hit this thing with just about every caliber that I own. So 22 long rifle, uh, 223, 300 blackout. Uh, hit it with some 308, some 12-gauge slugs, 40 Smith & Wesson, a 9mm. 7 millimeter Mauser and some more, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, there isn't a single hint of any damage or deformation to it. Now, these half inch AR500 targets are, uh, should pretty much last me forever. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the project and stay tuned. I'll be building a CNC table behind me here in the coming weeks.